Okay, so the topic of this video is going to be chromosomes. So let's go ahead and get started. So this slideshow actually has a bit of a story to it. Hello, my name is Norma. I'm about four months pregnant. I'm scheduled for an ultrasound procedure today. Please join me. Here's Norma undergoing the ultrasound and the doctor says, you know, during the ultrasound procedure, an image of the baby is scanned and viewed on this monitor. This process is non-invasive as only sound waves are used. It's similar to how sonar is used to map the ocean floor. Norma, I'm seeing something that concerns me a little bit. I think we should perform another test called a karyotype. This test can provide more answers. Oh no, is the problem serious? It's hard to know. I'd like to examine the baby's chromosomes to get more information. Well, what are chromosomes? So chromosomes are movable units of tightly coiled DNA and proteins. When you look in the picture, you can see a double helix, a DNA molecule, but it's coiling up and coiling up into this uh, blue shaped object labeled a chromosome, which is also kind of in the, the shape of the letter X right here. So this is a chromosome, a movable unit of DNA and proteins. Chromosomes tend to form when cells divide. When cells divide through either mitosis or meiosis, they form chromosomes. Right here, we see the, the chromosomes are forming. Now, when cells divide and continue through mitosis and meiosis, the chromosomes will be equally split between the new cells. So right here, we can see the chromosomes are separating. And then by the end, 50% of the chromosomes will be in the cell to the left and 50% of the chromosomes in the cell to the right. But chromosomes are movable units of DNA. And if we examine a chromosome a little more closely, we can see it's got a couple parts to it. Uh, we have what are known as the chromatids. These are the left sides and the right sides. Chromatids are, are, are identical. They're exact duplicates of one another. So the genetic material in the left chromatid is a duplication of the genetic material on the right chromatid. Notice they join at this little location here, uh, not always in the middle, but right here in this picture, it's kind of more towards the middle, known as the central mirror. This is an, uh, the location where the left and right chromatids tend to join with one another. So the doctor says, I'd like to examine the baby's chromosomes to see if they appear normal. Well, how can you examine the baby's chromosomes? He, she isn't even born yet. Well, first, I'd like to perform an amniocentesis procedure. I'm going to insert this needle into the womb, this needle right here into the womb, and suck up some of the fluid that surrounds the baby. There are cells from the baby that are floating in this fluid. And once I suck up the cells, we can examine the chromosomes of this baby for examination. So now that I have the fetal cells, we're going to karyotype them. Well, what's a karyotype? So a karyotype is a picture of an individual's chromosomes. Here is a normal karyotype from a person. And karyotypes are useful because they help to identify any chromosome abnormalities that might be present. Normally, a human should contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. For instance, here's a pair of chromosome number fours. See, there's a chromosome on the left and there's a chromosome on the right, so they're arranged in pairs. Here's chromosome pair number nine. There's two of them, one chromosome on the left and one chromosome on the right. Here's chromosome 13. There's a pair of them. Now, when you look at this picture right here, here's a karyotype showing an abnormality. Notice how this person has three chromosome 21s. This is a chromosome condition known as trisomy 21. You've probably heard it more commonly called Down syndrome. If a person's born with three chromosome 21s, this is a diagnosis of Down syndrome. Notice this karyotype right here. This is a karyotype of a person with trisomy 13, also known as Patau syndrome. So a karyotype can identify if there's an abnormality. And in this karyotype, the abnormality is known as monosomy X. They only have one X chromosome. They should have two X chromosomes. This condition is also called Turner's syndrome. So by examining a person's chromosomes, a certain, uh, perhaps a diagnosis can be made if there's an abnormality. 
So here's our normal karyotype again. And so a normal human should have 23 pairs of chromosomes. The first 22 pairs, these right here, are known as autosomes. Autosomes are defined as the non-sex chromosomes. There's no genes on these chromosomes that are going to influence one's gender, male or female sex. Now, when you look at the arrangement of the autosomes, you'll notice that the biggest chromosome is chromosome number one, and they progressively get a little smaller. This is how they've been identified, chromosome one, two, three. Obviously, the chromosomes are not numbered when they're inside of our cells, but we have arranged them from basically biggest to smallest. And what about the other pair of chromosomes? These right here are known as the sex chromosomes, pair number 23. And these sex chromosomes, these do contain genes that will influence whether a person is male or female. And in this case right here, this is actually a, a male right here because of the X and Y chromosome combination. But in this picture right here, we see a karyotype showing a female, the X and X chromosome combination. So if I put these two karyotypes side by side and ask you which karyotype is male, which karyotype is female, I hope you see the one on the left is male and the one on the right is female. The female has the XX combination, the male has the XY combination. So back to the story for a moment. Now that we have cells from amniocentesis, let's examine the baby's chromosomes. So here are the chromosomes underneath the microscope. These chromosomes were taken from cells obtained by amniocentesis. Naturally, they're not arranged in neat, orderly rows when they're inside the cell. The chromosomes have been stained for better viewing and then photographed. And now that we have a paper picture of the chromosomes, I can cut them out one at a time and match them together. We'll arrange the autosomes in order from longest to shortest. And Norma says, I noticed that the chromosomes are arranged in pairs. Is that significant? That's because we are looking at chromosomes from a diploid cell. Norma says, well, what are diploid cells? So diploid cells are cells with paired chromosomes. If you notice, there's a pair of chromosome 20s, one on the left and one on the right a pair of chromosome 9s, a pair of chromosome 22s, all the chromosomes are paired. Diploid cells therefore will contain the full set of chromosomes common to a species. And in humans, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. So the human diploid number is 46 total chromosomes. But other species might be different. This is the karyotype taken from a diploid cell of a rat. What is the diploid chromosome number for rats? You can see there are 21 total pairs of chromosomes. 21 pairs would be a total number of 42 chromosomes. In this karyotype, this is a karyotype taken from the diploid cells of a gorilla. What is the diploid chromosome number for gorillas? Well, gorillas have 24 pairs of chromosomes, so their diploid number is 48. So diploid cells are created through the process of mitosis, and here's a picture of the stages. So when a cell begins mitosis, it actually is already diploid, and by the end will remain diploid. So mitosis maintains the same amount of genetic material at the start versus the end. Very different than meiosis, which we'll talk about briefly in a little bit. So examples of diploid cells are what are called somatic cells. And these are the non-sex cells. These are cells of the body, not involved in reproduction. Cells like blood cells, muscle cells, bone cells, skin cells, nerve cells, heart cells. The vast majority of the body falls in the category of diploid somatic cells. So back to the story here for a moment. We inherit our chromosomes from our mother and father. That's why we should have two of every chromosome. Well, are all the cells in my body diploid? No, some cells are haploid. Well, then what are haploid cells? So haploid cells are cells with single or unpaired chromosomes. Look at the picture. There's only one chromosome 11, not two. One chromosome 18, not two. If I put it side by side with a diploid karyotype from earlier, you should see the diploid chromosomes are paired and the haploid chromosomes are singles. So haploid cells contain only half the total number of chromosomes. And in humans, that would be 23 chromosomes. 
So the human diploid number is 46, but half of 46 is haploid, which would be 23. Meiosis is the process that creates haploid cells. So when a cell goes through meiosis, it'll actually start diploid, but through the actions of meiosis become haploid. So during meiosis, the chromosome number is reduced by 50%. That's something we'll learn later on when we talk about meiosis. So what kind of cells are haploid cells? These are the gametes. The male gamete would be sperm cells, and the female gamete would be egg cells. So gametes are the sex cells. These are the cells involved in reproduction. Now, in plants, pollen is the male equivalent to sperm cells. So pollen, sperm, and egg cells are examples of gametes. Oh, I get it, says Norma. A male sperm cell has 23 chromosomes. A female egg cell has 23 chromosomes. Sex brings the egg and sperm together, and when they combine, they create a cell with 46 total chromosomes. Precisely, a fertilized egg is called a zygote. It is the first cell of a new human. I have good news. There doesn't seem to be any chromosome abnormalities with your baby. Would you like to know the sex of the baby? Well, from what you said earlier, I think I know, the baby has the XY chromosome combination. It's a boy. That is correct. We'll schedule another ultrasound procedure in a few weeks to continue to monitor your baby's development. Thank you for your help today. So let's practice some of the vocabulary we saw throughout this slideshow. Here's the rat karyotype from before, and here's some 10 questions right here. Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two. One. Number one, what is the sex of the rat used to make this karyotype? You can see the XX chromosome combination. I hope you said female. Now, all the other questions are talking about how many chromosomes there's going to be. Notice in the karyotype, rats have 21 pairs of chromosomes. Well, if you have 21 pairs of shoes, that would be 42 shoes. So the diploid number of rats is going to be 42, and haploid means half. Half of 42 is 21. So you're going to see the numbers 42 and 21 in questions 2 through 10. Question number 2, how many chromosomes can be found in somatic cells? Well, somatic cells are diploid, so they would have 42. How many chromosomes in a skin cell? Well, a skin cell is a somatic cell, which we just said are diploid, 42. How many chromosomes are in a gamete cell? Gamete cells are haploid, that would be 21. And we already said the, gap, uh, the diploid number is 42. For number six, how many chromosomes in a sperm cell? A sperm cell is an example of a haploid gamete, which would be 21. How many chromosomes in a blood cell? Blood cells are somatic and somatics are diploid, which is 42. And we already said haploid is 21. Number nine, how many chromosomes in a cell made by mitosis? Well, cells made by mitosis are diploid, which would be 42. And how many chromosomes in a zygote cell? Well, the zygote is when uh, a sperm and egg combine. 21 chromosomes in a sperm combines with 21 chromosomes in an egg to make a zygote with 42 chromosomes. So as I wrap up this video, here's a practice quiz that you can try to, to check your understanding. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, everyone.